Okay, so last week we talked about uh, this, which was our memory verse from last week, and it's Jesus' words, and we kind of unpacked this a couple of weeks ago in a sermon as well. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so as uh, Laura and I explained a few weeks ago, we're going to stop those faith at home focuses, right? Because we're, you know, here and meeting in person and certainly some of us are anyway. Uh, But one of the things we want to keep up and retain is this Bible memorization. So each month, a new verse. And I've just been really encouraged because people have talked to me and said, oh, I've, I've been memorizing these verses or at least some of them and something will happen in my life. And right at the right moment, that verse comes into mind and it gives me wisdom or help or strength or encouragement or something right at the the moment I need it, right? And that's that principle being lived out. Finish it. The more you get into God's word, the more God's word gets into you. That's right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new verse. I'm going to talk about why it's so important, Uh, but we're going to review a few of the ones that we have had in the past. Not all of them because we've done like over 30 the past couple years, Um, but as I read it through, you fill in the blank if you can. All right. No one's taken score. There's no pressure. All right. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have right. Eternal life or everlasting life translates the same Greek word. So that's very very good. John 3, 16. Okay. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my Path. path. Right. Psalm 119 verse 105. Wow. Really good. Okay. Next one. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. That's great. That's a great one to have kind of on a poster in the house too. All right, next one. Come near to God and he will to you. Yeah, come near to or draw near. Some translations say draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James 4, 8. Written by the half brother of of, uh, Jesus called James in the New Testament. Uh, Next. Therefore, do not about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I think though, trouble worry, trouble worry. There's something else. I don't know. That's, let's do that one again. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah. Okay. So Matthew 6, 34. I remember that was actually the first one we did after things shut down at the start of the pandemic. And people are sort of like, man, that was providential timing. Unbelievable. Okay, next one. It is more blessed to yeah. than to receive, right? Acts 20, verse 35. That's a quote from Jesus that's quoted in the book of Acts, right? All right, next one. Okay, this is a bit trickier. I'm going to let you look at it for a second. It's from Philippians 4, 8. Tenor pla ep. Tenor pla ep. That was the little device that Laura gave us. Whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, right? It goes on to say, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, next. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive deceive yourselves. Do what it says, right? Do the word, perform the word, do the word. James 1.22, that's a great one. Next, okay. This is our new one. Now, this is a, a quote from Jesus that is very short, and that it's not like one of those popular ones. It's not like John 3, 16, but Scripture cannot be set aside, John 10, 35, okay? Scripture cannot be set aside, John 10, 35. Now, I've got a few things here, uh, and uh, as you're, some of you were coming in, you are asking, what are these things going to be about? So let's say, okay, here's, some, here's a bathing suit, okay? And uh, let's say you want to go uh, swimming, right? And you've got your bathing suit, but all of a sudden, you actually don't have your bathing suit anymore. Can you still go swimming? Okay, bad example. (laughs) Bad example. Okay, bad example. Purge that thought from your mind. Let's say you're with a bunch of people in the middle of a field, and, uh, you know, you've got enough people, you've got the bases, you know, the mound is set out, and you've got your gloves and everything, and all of a sudden, the ball and the bat goes away. It's it's going to be hard to play baseball, right? And there's nothing else around. You can't pick up a bunch of sticks. There's not some rocks that you could hit. There's absolutely nothing. The field is totally bare, right? All of a sudden, if someone takes the bat and the ball away, it's, it's going to be hard to play, actually, baseball, right? Okay. All right. Now, the third thing I've got here is a little ice fishing rod. This is Ben's ice fishing rod. Okay, so you're out there on the lake, 
you know, you've got the auger, you know, you've made the hole, it goes down in there, and you've got your little scoop, and you take out the ice and everything. Um, and all of a sudden, you've got no string, got not, literally nothing else, right? And someone takes this away. You know, you, you can't really go ice fishing anymore, right? You can't actually find anything else to actually do that, right? You're going to reach down the hole with your hand? Like, not for very long, you're not. Okay. So those things cannot be set aside. And the point here is that Scripture cannot be set aside. So just like those things need certain things, in life we need Scripture. There is no situation in life where there isn't a word of help or wisdom to us from the Bible. Right? So the Bible not, might not mention specifically all the words or things that might be in our modern vocabulary today, but there is nothing that we will handle or come across where there is not a word of advice or wisdom of Scripture for us today. So Scripture cannot be set aside. Actually, I was thinking on the way in here, oh, too bad, I should have... We should have thought of a nice little jingle uh, for this new one. But then I thought, wait a second, set aside and 1035 rhymes. So you could make kind of like a heavy metal little jingle. Scripture cannot be set aside. John 1035. Right? So there you go. <laughs> so I just thought, let's, let's do that. It's kind of like skillet, right? Okay. Scripture cannot be set aside. John 1035. Uh, and so I think everyone's going to be able to leave here. And uh, maybe we'll do a musical rendition of this later and put it online or something. But that is a sure one. You should be able to memorize it, right? And so what we've done, uh, we always encourage people uh, to take this, to write it out, uh, maybe print it out and put it somewhere in your, in your house. So we put ours like close to our dining room tables so that we can have conversations about it. So there are a bunch of copies of these with this. Scripture cannot be set aside at the back door or on the welcome desk. Please take one for your household when you leave. And this way, you can put it up someplace in your house. Maybe it's in the den. Maybe it's you know, close to the dining, dining room table or something. And okay, you think about, okay, what did we face today or what did I face today uh, that was confusing or difficult and what might be a word from Scripture or wisdom to help us? And so when you visually place it in your house, that's something that kind of encourages those conversations. Scripture cannot be set aside, John 10, 35.